Hey guys, it's Dungeon Master Mark again. Uh, I had a couple emails the other day I just got a chance to finally look at. Sorry, I've been out to the zoo and a bunch of things this weekend with my family. Uh, a couple people emailed me different questions about basing materials and how you keep uh, your pieces straight and even and you know you want to keep that nice crisp corners uh, when you're building uh, tile projects. And I just want to give you guys a real quick look. This is the jig that I built, uh, the frame if you will, where I make all my dungeon tile pieces on. This is uh, solid wood. Um, this is a 18 inch by 2 foot, so I can make fairly large uh, pieces for dungeon, dungeon brawl uh, campaign pieces or just for my dungeon tile pieces. Uh, this is a set that I'm working on for a, a dungeon set here for one of my friends. And uh, as you can see, this piece is based on the, uh, the cardboard and the gothic bricks. And what you do, you slide, that, slide your base piece there in the corner and you just build your wall up. Um, it doesn't really matter what type of material you're using. Um, there's one of my older pieces you see on the uh, the uh, foam board there, which I no longer use since it's kind of bad for the environment. But uh, like I said, if you wanted to build a wall up, you just put that on there and then you just build your two corners up in the wall. And there you go. And like I said, a piece like this, <clears throat> like I said, I maybe spent uh, 10 minutes building this uh, a year or so ago. Like I said, very, very simple. Like I said, a couple bucks in pieces. I just use my table saw. Uh, cut a nice square piece here. Use the square and the level. Then you have the uh, the walls, which these are about three inches high. That way I can make sure I, I definitely have enough room to even, you know, keep the walls nice and straight there. And it doesn't matter what type of media you use. Uh, the other question I had a couple people ask was, what do I use to base my pieces on? Uh, I've used all different types of materials. I've used uh, MDF. Um, I've used foam board like this. Um, I have used the white foam like that, especially if you're going to make like a hollowed out section, like if you want to make pits or traps, or if you want to make some type of uh, maybe like a lake or a pond or water effect underneath of it. Uh, the bad thing is these, some foams you have to check. Some foams are recyclable, so they're not so horrible for the environment. This particular type is. You can find this or is recycle. And obviously you can recycle these. Um, the good thing about a hobby is a lot of things are recyclable. You know, you can find paints that aren't environment, are environmentally damaging. Uh, foam board is or polystrene. This stuff is horrible for the environment. Um, I definitely wouldn't recommend using this stuff. I mean, this stuff's just you know landfill filler. It's horrible and you can't reuse it at all. <clears throat> the one good thing about the cereal boxes or cardboard, I use the cereal boxes for one thing. It's already been recycled, so. It is a little bit more environmentally, environmentally friendly. <clears throat> the other good thing is it is cheap. Uh, chances are, you know, you've, you know, I think at my table I actually have a couple pizza boxes and I have some foam that I've recycled over there. So like I said, it's free. It's already been recycled. It's really, really nice. And the good thing is, nice and nice and flat. Uh, the good thing is, if you do make something out of this where it's super, super thin, like I said, it's nice and strong. I mean, you know, you don't have to worry about these things breaking or anything like that. As long as you use a good plaster, obviously. Um, you can actually set those on top of something like this if you do want to have a piece where it's hollowed out or if you want to have a pit. That way you have a multifunctional piece. <clears throat> you don't just automatically have a piece that's sticking up, you know, foot up in the air if you have the rest of your dungeons down this way. <clears throat> Pardon me. Now, that being said, um, the type of piece that handles the glue the best is probably the actual uh, cardboard material the, from like the cereal boards and things of that nature. Uh, the, like I said, once you glue the pieces down, what you do want to do, you do want to put a little bit of weight on it. Uh, foam board will definitely warp on you. I don't think I have any pieces here at the moment. <clears throat> the one bad thing about foam board is if you get too much glue in there, it will warp and you'll get kind of a like a bow in your pieces, which looks absolutely horrible. The cereal board normally won't, won't bow, but sometimes a couple of your tiles will just stick up just a little bit. Which of these ones, I actually, I'm actually trying to do that on purpose. Uh, that way the floor tiles are adjusted just a little bit. I actually wound up using some little shims with a couple extra pieces of cardboard on those. But like I said, that gives you a nice idea of how these pieces work. Uh, like I said, for like a piece of foam or any other type of basing material, you'll just stick your tiles on there, you know, your floor tiles, put them up against the wall there, and then, uh, you know, you build your wall up. Yeah, like I said, nice and straight, nice and even, 90 degrees all the way around. Um, it is possible, like I said, if you wanted to, you could technically build a, a curved wall. If you're building a curved wall, 
Um, I have seen some of the, the mold pieces, and you can actually get the pieces at uh, Hobby Lobby where you have like the uh, 45 degree angles and different other angles if you wanted to build a piece for angles. But like I said, for your normal dungeon tiles, um, building things of that nature, uh, build yourself a nice jig. It'll make your life so much easier for building uh, dungeon tiles. But uh, that's it for today. If you guys have any questions or any other comments, give me a call, let me know, and uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks.